Lights out, sirens blaring and Pakistani radars scrambling for answers in the darkness. But the real threat was already in the sky. Unstoppable, invisible and supersonic. Our next story taking a closer look at how on the intervening night of May 9 and 10, the Indian Air Force unleashed the Brahmos and the world saw a new era of air warfare. It began with a flicker on a radar screen. Then silence. And moments later, impact. In the dead of the night, India unleashed its most formidable weapon. The Brahmos. Supersonic, precise, unstoppable. Operation Sindur wasn't just a military response, it was a statement, a warning and for Pakistan, a nightmare. Pakistan's Chinese-made radar systems never stood a chance. According to ANI, Indian dummy drones flew in first, decoys that mimicked fighter jets, confused enemy radars. Once exposed, kamikaze drones swept in, disabling air defenses with surgical strikes. It is a cat and mouse game and you have to be ahead of the curve to beat your adversary. So that is what is going to happen. So if you ask, was this different? Was this engagement different? Definitely it was different. And a lot of new aspects have come out, but we were prepared for it. We were trained for it and we were equipped for it. As Pakistani air defenses scrambled in panic, Brahmo's missiles followed in silence. Sargodha, Rahim Yar Khan, Skardu, and Jakobabad are among the 11 major Pakistani air bases damaged in Indian strikes. Each was struck with chilling accuracy. According to ANI's report, about 15 Brahmos missiles were unleashed by the Indian Air Force with an aim to disrupt Pakistan's ability to launch aircraft and other operations. With Pakistan's air power crippled, along with Brahmos, Indian forces unleashed scalp, rampage and crystal maze missiles. Loitering munitions and laser-guided bombs tore through hardened shelters. एक मॉडर्न टेक्नोलॉजी से लेस प्रोफेशनल फोर्स ही कर सकती है आपकी स्पीड और प्रिसीजन इस लेवल की थी कि दुश्मन हक्का बक्का रह गया a gaping crater now marks the center of Rahim Yar Khan's runway, proof of a strike no denial can erase. Pakistani military systems fired, but at shadows. India's real warplanes came low and fast, invisible to conventional radars. And staying well on the Indian side, it was modern warfare. So what about Pakistan's response? Wild launches, panicked scrambling and eventual silence. China's tech, touted for years by Pakistan as a counter to Indian might, lay exposed. The HQ-9 radar network, the very spine of Pakistan's air defense grid, was reduced to twisted scrap. Our drones, our missiles, Pakistan ko kai din tak nind nahi aayegi. The Indian Air Force didn't just fire, it filmed. Thermal signatures, real-time drone feeds, aligning with satellite images, all presented in a clinical evidence-backed briefing by the Indian Defence Forces. 
In contrast, Pakistan's military presser offered bluster, blurry slides and zero proof. Pakistan's humiliation is now playing out in real time. Its Chinese supplied arsenal failed. Its military doctrine failed. Only one system truly worked. India's Brahmos. India didn't just retaliate, it redefined modern air warfare. Bureau Report, Neon World is Fun. Our next story is about a birthday celebration. No ordinary one. And whose birthday are we talking about? US President Donald Trump. And why is the celebration making headlines? What's the plan? What will Trump's birthday bash look like? Well, it is said to be a grand one. In fact, it will be a twin celebration of Donald Trump's birthday and the Army's 250th anniversary. How much will the celebration cost? A whopping $25 million to $45 million. That's what U.S. officials have told Reuters. Two U.S. officials told Reuters on condition of anonymity that the eventual cost could be as high as $45 million. And just to break down the costs involved and put things in perspective, one of them said the cost included several million dollars more than it would have without a parade. Very significant several million dollars more now imagine as many as 25 tanks rolling through washington it's going to be a grand affair to say the least the reuters report says that the u.s army had long been planning to move troops and equipment to the national mall in washington on june 14 as part of its anniversary celebration and the plans now include a parade since that coincides with trump's birthday it is his 79th birthday the thing is, there has been criticism when Trump has been on a cost-cutting spree. Critics have called a parade an authoritarian display of power that is wasteful, as per the Reuters report. Also, there is history to this. Let's look at what happened during Trump's first administration. He ordered the Pentagon to look into a display of military might. And that exercise would have cost $90 million. You know what he chose instead? An exhibition instead of a parade of tanks and other armored vehicles during a July 4 celebration in 2019. So what else is known about the celebration this time? The army is planning on sending about two dozen M1 Abrams tanks for the celebration. It's going to be a grand bash. Reuters earlier reported that the plan included more than 6,500 troops, about 150 vehicles, 50 aircraft moving to Washington. On to China now. It is facing what could become one of the most alarming public, public health crises of this century. A staggering rise in dementia cases. You heard that right. And according to a new global study, China has the fastest growing dementia burden in the world. In 30 years, in fact, dementia cases in China have tripled. Whereas in 1990, China had around 4 million people diagnosed with dementia. That number has surged to 17 million in 2021 and if the current trends hold it could skyrocket to 115 million by 2050 that's nearly two-thirds of the global projected dementia cases by mid-century while global dementia cases have doubled between 1990 and 2021 china's number far outpacing the rest of the world why exactly is this happening the research, led by scientists at the Fudan University and published in the journal PLOS One, does not pinpoint a single cause, but it does highlight key risk factors like diabetes, obesity and smoking, all on the rise in China. Almost half of all Chinese men smoke, one of the highest rates globally. The highest number of dementia cases is seen in the 80 to 84 age group, especially among women. But researchers say China's aging population alone does not fully explain the surge. Unless urgent and effective public health interventions are ruled out, the study warns the crisis will only get worse. By 2050, dementia could affect 152 million people globally and China will bear the brunt of it. With a rapidly aging population and rising chronic disease rates, dementia may soon become one of China's most severe health and economic challenges. 
Shifting focus for now, a social media post by a former FBI director has triggered a high-level U.S. federal investigation. The U.S. Secret Service and the Department of Homeland Security have launched parallel probes into an alleged threat directed at U.S. President Donald Trump. Ex-FBI director James Comey shared an image on Instagram. It featured seashells arranged to form the number 8647. In his now-deleted Instagram post... Comey called it a cool shell formation on my beach walk, quote unquote. But 8647 is not just an ordinary number. It can mean a lot of things. In American slang, the number 86 means to eliminate or get rid of someone and 47, that's how many presidents the United States has had, with Trump being the 47th president. Comey deleted the post uh, soon after the backlash erupted. In fact, let's tell you, insisting he just liked the shell pattern and had no idea the numbers had any association with violence. But many are not buying it because Comey has a past with Trump. In his first term as president, Trump fired Comey as FBI chief in 2017, remember. Comey had at the time initiated investigations into pot potential links between Trump's 2016 campaign and Russia. U.S. Congressman Andy Ogles called the post a coded message calling for the assassination of Donald Trump. Ogles also demanded answers like... Does Comey still hold access to classified material or security clearances? Meanwhile, the FBI director, Akash Patel, weighed in, confirming communication with the Secret Service and assuring FBI's full cooperation in the matter. Meanwhile, U.S. Homeland Security Secretary took to X, stating that Comey called for the assassination of Trump and adding that the U.S. Homeland Security and Secret Service are investigating the matter.